I would uh, I was told to show a few cases uh, with the lateral extensile approach. So since we haven't covered it uh, before, as Sampath was supposed to join, but uh, he's stuck up somewhere. I'll just go a few slides covering that approach a little bit. So the principle of surgery in any calcaneal fracture is to correct the calcaneal height, the width, and correct the tuberosity varus, thereby aligning the subtalar as well as the calcaneal cuboid joint. Now we have two um, approaches, uh, two options to do this, either minimally invasive fixations, which has been nicely shown before, and Second uh, is to fix it with a, a conventional lateral extensile approach using plates. Primary fusion is not uh, really encouraged and uh, delayed fusion gives much better results if at all you are planning on fusion. To do this, we have uh, really two approaches, the extensile lateral, which has been the gold standard and a workhorse, and the sinus tarsi approach and its modifications. Very rarely a medial approach is required if you have a sustentacular fracture which is displaced. So the lateral extensile approach has been designed to uh, uh, between the two perforating branches of the lateral peroneal artery, um, between the peroneal, uh, the tendoachillus and the peroneal tendons and the lateral malleolus. So you start midway between the tendoachillus and the lateral malleolus posterior border go down right to the junction of the sole and the normal skin and then horizontally up to the base of the fifth metatarsal. I do it in a lateral position like this. So this is the incision midway between a slightly posterior than the mid midline between the lateral malleolus and the tendoachillus come down to the junction of the sole. That is an important landmark because you need a broad base flap like this and then go horizontally to the fifth metatarsal. Raise a full thickness flap, do not dissect between the skin, even retract the peroneal tendons up and then pass two K-wires, one K-wire in the lateral malleolus and one K-wire in the cuboid. Bend those K-wires anteriorly and then don't touch this flap at all. So there should not be any retraction of this flap with a retractor uh, during the entire course of the surgery. Remove these K-wires at the end of your surgery only. <clears throat> Once you um, do these, uh, retract, retract this flap and put these two K-wires, you need to visualize the posterior facet by cutting the calcaneofibular ligament. As you see, there is no calcaneofibular ligament here and the, the peroneal ex the, uh, retinaculi, which also blend with the calcaneofibular ligament. So this is how you raise it. This is the calcaneofibular ligament. You have to cut it. Once you cut it, you will immediately see the posterior facet and the joint. So this is the, the way you do it. And uh, the flap has to be, the this has to be completely full thickness. So your knife has to touch the bone. Only then you start raising the, the flap. Once your basic dissection is done, you need to identify five key fragments of this fracture, which are more or less <coughs> similar in most of the fractures, barring a few comminuted exceptions. But then the first fragment is the lateral wall, which, um, which is usually bulging out, you remove that bulge or the lateral wall fragment. The second fragment is the posterior tuberosity fragment. The third fragment is the lateral half of the posterior facet, which is usually depressed. Unlike what is shown in this figure, it is gone, usually gone down vertically. The fourth fragment is the constant fragment, which is the sustentacular fragment. And the fifth fragment is the anterior process, which usually forms the calcaneo tuboid joint. So these are the five key fragments which you need to identify. Once you have done that, you remove the first fragment, that is the lateral wall. You can even remove it on the table. Um, and then what you need to do is elevate this fragment number three, templating on the base of the talus, and then pass a K-wire from three to four, and then an interfragmentary screw from three to four. Once you do that, half of your job is done. <clears throat> that is restoring the posterior facet. Then the next important step is correcting the heel virus. So fragment number two has to be reduced to fragment number three and four by temporary K wires like this, correct the virus, taking a good actual view. So if you see in live surgery, this is what it is. 
this is a depressed fragment so you elevate this up and i usually transfix it with the talus with this kind of a kyr going from posterior side into the sorry into the talus here there remains a big void which you don't need to bone graft there is ample evidence now that bone grafting is not required um paper by sanders himself and many other authors also so there is no need to fill it with bone graft or bone substitutes so this is this takes care of your posterior facet once this elevation is done and then fix an interfragmentary screw from fragment 3 to fragment 4 into the sustentaculum in the cephalad direction inferiorly and cephalad so from 3 to 4 like this then correct your heel varus by a posterior k wire uh which you can use as a joystick and then uh so this is how you do it this is a wire going into the talus holding this fragment and an interfragmentary screw in place and then take a good axial view to assess whether your varus has been corrected or not once this is done most of your important steps are over so then you can go on um, plating it i use a standard perimeter plate um most of the indian companies also have it now and um, then the surgery is more or less over but then do not start plating unless you have seen that the actual correction of length as well as the varus is done uh, another tip to correct the varus is not to contour the plate or under contour or reverse contour the plate that will make your varus automatically uh, come in line with the anterior process you close the wound using algover donati sutures or staples don't crush the skin edges because you will always get skin edge necrosis especially here uh, on the corner a few tips to avoid even wound complications do not embark upon surgery unless you see wrinkling in an extensile lateral approach i wait for 5 to 7 days i at times even send the patient home i elevate it a foot above the heart level and then uh call the patient back for surgery you take the incision at the junction of the sole and the skin not over in the skin or in the sole raise full thickness flaps there should not be any retraction uh, retraction use two k wires like i showed you and avoid an over tight closure so these are the tips how you can um, avoid skin necrosis or wound complications post operatively i give only a slab for 3 weeks i mobilize the ankle at 3 weeks there is an excellent paper comparing early mobilization of the ankle versus late in journal of foot and ankle surgery 2016 which says that you can start uh, when if you have plated the ankle then you can start ankle motion do not start weight bearing i start toe touch weight bearing at 6 weeks and i progress to full weight bearing at 3 months sorry to interrupt sir do you use the drain Yes, I use a mini uh, Romo vac, a mini vac as it is called, and I remove it after 24 hours. So I don't want any tension on my suture line. So I use a drain. So this is a case. This is a 50-year-old gentleman fall from a height. You can see um, quite bad joint depression here, as well as um, a multiple fracture lines there. This is the CT scan. Now, a word of caution: when you do a CT scan, you must insist on coronal cuts because quite a few centers don't give you this coronal cuts, and then you cannot visualize the subtalar joint or the facet well. You cannot also see what is happening medially unless you ask for coronal cuts. So, coronal sections are very important, and you have to tell the radiologist to give you these um, all the views of the fracture in coronal sections. so you wait till you see the wrinkling i had to wait for almost a week in this case and then these are the immediate post op x-rays you can see that this depression has been adequately corrected as well as the varus has been corrected and, and this is a um, perimeter plate which has been applied and this is his um, x-ray after 6 months <clears throat> another case this is a young uh, male fall from a height the bolus angle has almost become negative here and uh, comminuted fracture this is the immediate post op x ray the heel looks in a little bit of varus but that's because of medial comminution here uh, and this is 6 months post op and this is 1 year post op 
this is a sim simple synthes non locking stainless steel plate unfortunately these were in fact very good low profile plates uh, by synthes but no longer available they were very cheap also the plate used to cost somewhere around 5000 rupees only but uh, they have suddenly discontinued making these plates and now they sell only the the lock plates but this was a very useful plates i have used many of them in my business another example a 35 year old uh, laborer fall from first floor a, a severely comminuted fracture i'm sorry i don't have the ct scans with me right now but very comminuted fracture he was a very poor laborer he could not afford uh, any other implant apart from so i had to use a simple reconstruction plate contour and this is how it has been reconstructed this is image at post up this is three months post up and this is an year later so you see always i would prefer using an interfragmentary screw in the uh, posterior facet and then neutralizing the whole thing with a plate this is one year post up thank you one just one case which i wanted to show with the sinus tarsa approach adequately it has been discussed already but what i do is i use these kind of um, screws instead of the wires i correct the heel wires using two k wires and in the through the same guide wires i pass these screws so this is um, how i fix with cannulated cancellous screws now in this case since i have not used a plate i would give a cast for 6 weeks and then start mobilization another example of um, uh, again comminuted facet and this is how here i have used 4 mm small screws and this is at one year post op this is another sandus 2 comminuted if you see the joint is not bad so this is sandus 2 and uh, this is immediate post op 6 weeks post op this is 6 uh, months post op and this is one year and this is the clinical photo thank you